Don't let your AC system get knocked out by the heat this upcoming summer. Call KS Services and let our team come take a look. We repair and install all makes and models. We even offer a free no-hassle quote and second opinion, so give us a call today. With our flexible financing, you can literally pick your payment. We may even be able to help you knock down that utility bill a bit. KS Heating and Air, the team ensuring your comfort. This is your Weather Extreme video for Sunday, September the 9th. I'm meteorologist Brian Peters. Thanks so much for tuning in. Our satellite image shows we've got a lot of clouds settling into the area as a frontal boundary moves into the area. On our surface map, you can see uh, the surface low over the Ohio River Valley. That's actually the remnants of Gordon, believe it or not and uh, the front trailing back into East Texas. Temperatures this morning across the area, uh, generally in the lower half of the 70s, so mild as we've been expecting. Radar showing a few showers in the northwest quadrant of the state, but uh, the bulk of the shower is a little bit further to the uh, northwest uh, along the frontal boundary. Our watch warning map is uh, very interesting. We have the green areas that you see are flash flood watches down over parts of Texas as well as up along the Ohio uh, uh, River Valley <clears throat> as well as the mid-Atlantic states. But notice the blues in New York, Maine, uh, northern New Hampshire and Vermont and the cyans up there in northern uh, Maine. Those uh, the, the uh, brighter the cyan is a freeze watch and the um, other blue is a freeze or frost advisory. QPF-wise, we're looking at on the order of about two inches in the northwest quadrant of the state of Alabama, uh, tapering to a little bit less than an inch over the southeast quadrant of the state. Uh, the HPC excessive rainfall outlook folks have a narrow band of uh, that along and ahead of that front. Uh, as, uh, in addition to a moderate risk over parts of uh, Ohio, uh, Pennsylvania and uh, West Virginia uh, near that uh, surface low. And Storm Protection Center uh, has no uh, slight risk areas, but they do have several marginals, one over West Virginia and uh, eastern Kentucky, another over northeastern New Mexico, and another in the Dakotas for day one. Now, the tropics, they've, tropics have really become active. Uh, we're not even going to talk much about the area that's in the vicinity of uh, Bermuda because it's not expected to do much. But there's Florence followed by Isaac, followed by Helene. And uh, we'll take these one at a time, starting with Helene. Helene is uh, sort of uh, affecting the Cape Verde Islands right now, expected to become a hurricane later today. Should track uh, westward and then northwest out into the central Atlantic. And uh, will we'll stay a hurricane for several days, but should dissipate uh, around Friday. Uh, the next one in line is Isaac. And uh, Isaac is also forecast to become a hurricane on Monday, tomorrow, uh, and approach the Leeward Islands uh, basically on Thursday. And then the one we really need to watch is Florence. Florence expected to become a hurricane. Still a tropical storm uh, at this writing, but uh, expected to become a hurricane later today and a major hurricane on Monday and remain a major hurricane as it approaches the southeast coast of the U.S., and there's still a great deal of uncertainty as, a, as a represented by that cone. Uh, so we are not going to talk about, you know, a specific point. I, I realize the little M there on 2 a.m. on Friday is over uh, uh, Will, uh, the uh, Wilmington area. So, you know, there you have it. I mean, it's, it's there. All right, let's get to the 06E GFS model run. And here comes a little trough that is uh, bringing this front into our area and taking the surface low up uh, into uh, the... Uh, uh, northeastern U.S., and of course we see the surface low there over eastern Kentucky and the Ohio River Valley and the, the front draping down into the coastal area of uh, Texas. By Monday, uh, that trough is moving into the eastern Great Lakes, so the system is moving on fairly nicely, uh, but the front is not because it's going to be dragged down into our area and kind of take up residence. Uh, we see that a little piece of that trough stays back over the lower Mississippi River Valley and parts of East Texas on Tuesday, so we stay a little bit unsettled. And, of course, now here comes Florence on Tuesday. Uh, we can see it in the right side of the picture there. On uh, Wednesday, uh, we have uh, ridging beginning to develop over the eastern part of the U.S. there. And you see that strong ridge to the north of Florence, 
and that is what is uh, basically helping to bring it into the southeast U.S. coast, and we see that on Thursday. Now, this is where uh, we can look at a little bit of model differences. There's a surface chart, and of course, you can see it's a major hurricane. And uh, there is one concern here that I have, and that is how long it's forecast to stay in the vicinity of the North Carolina coast. Uh, but here's the uh, European, and you can see that European is also quite strong, so they're both in good agreement on that, uh, but uh, they're not in agreement on the exact position. The uh, European a little bit faster, bringing it into the shore. Uh, but uh, certainly a very close in agreement to the National Hurricane Center's uh, official forecast for that. Now, this is where the problem start is the GFS doesn't get rid of uh, Florence. It keeps it around the Carolina coast. You can see that on Friday. And uh, the surface pattern, uh, still a very strong hurricane, a major hurricane as it remains out over the water. Now, the European, on the other hand, has... Uh, weakened it somewhat and brought it into, I guess you'd call that central North Carolina. Uh, so the storm not quite as uh, strong, but certainly still not moving much. Uh, and we see that on Saturday for the GFS once again. It's over the eastern part uh, and, and sort of straddling the uh, Outer Banks area. And then finally by Sunday we still see it uh, in the upper air pattern and at the surface over that area. So that's, that's talking about three to four days of, of extreme hurricane conditions. This is not going to be a fun ride for uh, the eastern half of North Carolina and the coastal areas there of the Carolinas in general. Looking out into voodoo country, finally the GFS moves it out by the 18th of September. That's Tuesday. That could mean five or six days. Wow, that's just not uh, hard to fathom. By the, the 21st of September, we see a little bit of uh, troughiness, so, uh, so uh, no excessive heat to speak of. But we do note that the uh, ridge is there again around the 24th of September, so some warm days still ahead. That'll do it for the Weather Extreme video for this morning. James Spann should be back in the saddle with the next edition first thing on Monday morning. In the meantime, always stay tuned to the blog for notes on Alabama's weather. I'm meteorologist Brian Peters. Have a great day. Godspeed. KS Heating and Air, the team ensuring your comfort.